it's 8 29 just uh just one more minute to go we'll get started thank you so much Raji, for joining in thank you so much harshika all right uh we have someone else uh, another person i can't really see the name All right, so let's get started, guys, with Google AdWords. Last session on last Sunday, if you guys have attended the session, it was more or less about the basics, basics of digital marketing. All right, I guess there was some issue with the go to meeting. The audio get, keeps getting lost and then uh, keeps getting connected. All right, so before we begin, uh, thank you so much, Rajiv Harshika, for joining in. We're like just uh, waiting for some more people to join. Again, audio connection. All right, so this audio connection keeps going, uh, keeps getting disconnected and keeps getting uh, connected back again. So sorry for that. So, all right, so we have Sam as well joining in. Hi, Sam. So today we're going to be discussing about we would be discussing about Google AdWords. The last session, Rajiv, were you there in the last session? Harshika, I know you were not there, but I've uploaded the recorded version. So Sam, were you also there in the last session? Rajiv, Sam, were you part of the last session? Last... All right, thanks Rajiv, you were part of it. And Sam, how about you? Were you part of uh, the last Sunday session? Just wanted to check with you. All right, I believe I. All right. I hope you would be able to hear me now. Hear me now. Thank you so much. And I really apologize for the audio connection issue. Uh, there's some problem with GoToMeeting today. The audio keeps going uh, back. It keeps getting disconnected and keep coming, keep, keep coming, keeps coming back. Not really sure why is that. So I'll just try and open my another laptop too. In case it happens again, I'll use another laptop to see whether this works fine or not 
All right, so today we are, the topic for today, after understanding the basics in the last session, guys, uh, we understood what are the major basics. We would be starting with Google AdWords. I hope most of you are aware about what Google AdWords is. So if somebody uh, types in a specific query, or a, uh, which is also called a keyword, let's say in a uh, search engine, which is this, uh, the search engine bar, whenever someone types in a query, which is also called a keyword, the ads which appear on the top, the search results which appear on the top as the ad symbol, we are going to create these. It's very important to create these ads, learn how to get them created and what are the overall dynamics behind creating these ads and running them successfully. Do you think anybody can create these ads easily? What, uh, what would make a specific marketer different from another marketer? I can tell you creating an ad is pretty easy stuff guys with Google AdWords, it's not that difficult. But the only thing which separates one Google AdWords professional from another Google AdWords professional is the kind of conversions which one AdWords professional can get. So let's say there is an AdWords professional A and then an AdWords professional B. If both of them are being given the same budget, if both the AdWords professional are being given the same budget, but uh, out of those two, who gets the maximum conversions and that two quality conversions? When I say conversions, conversions can be defined as anything, guys. Conversion, any idea, guys, what is the definition of a conversion in the internet marketing language? If we run campaigns, as per you, what is the definition of conversions? Would like to hear from you guys, so we'll keep it interactive. I would like to know from you, what is your understanding about conversion? So if I'm running a Google ad, let's say Paytm is over here and then just one EMI. So Rajiv says links getting more it. Absolutely. This can be one of the conversion. What can be different kinds of conversions guys? Harshika says running ad campaigns and people pay per ad. So uh, when we say people pay per ad, uh, it's only the advertiser who pays for the ad, right? Paper for on the paper click basis. Yeah. So according to clicks, absolutely right, uh, Harshika. Abhishek says people who click on ads so we get conversions in return. What do you define? How would you define conversion? So let's say Abhishek, Harshika, Rajiv, Sam. If I am, let's say, Paytm. Okay, I am Paytm today. I create an ad and I create an ad which would appear whenever this keyword by iPhone 5 is going to be typed. When somebody types in this keyword, the ad which will trigger is going to be this. And with and I am Paytm, I have created this ad and I have linked it. I've linked my ad to this uh, particular keyword. Now, how would a conversion happen? Somebody who will uh, type in this keyword within the chat window, oh, sorry, not the chat window, sorry, uh, the search bar in the Google search bar. Let's say there is third party, there is someone else who types in this keyword and this Paytm ad comes up. Now, getting a click on a ad is what is that what you called a conversion? or somebody clicking on your ad, going onto your website, and after going onto your website, signs up, is that a conversion? Or is it like somebody uh, clicking on your ad, then going onto your website, and then signing up, and after signing up, uh, adding this product, you know, opening this a specific product is a conversion, or somebody going and clicking on the product and also adding it to the cart adding to the card would be called as conversion or buying the product would be called as conversion. So there are different uh, definitions to uh, conversions. What do you think would be the conversion of Paytm in this case, guys? So Vishik says, by clicking the ads, there are possibilities that they, might, they may buy our product, absolutely. Rajiv says, clicking on the link is what uh, the conversion is. And Rajiv is possibly asking that. I'll surely help you in that. Buying the product of Paytm, absolutely. So uh, we have an example. Harshika also uh, deals into some e-commerce products. So she is selling uh, her products on uh, eBay. So whatever product she has, let's say if she runs an advertisement for her product and her product uh, advertisement gets listed over here, she is not interested in how many clicks will come over, okay? Nobody would be interested in getting only clicks and clicks not converting, get, getting converted into sales. Because clicks only will always lead to uh, cost, right? 
but the cost has to get converted into a benefit which is a sale so paytm if paytm keeps getting let's say 10000 in a scenario 1 let's say in scenario 1 paytm gets 10000 clicks in a day All right, sorry, the audio got lost. So, right. So, in scenario one, let's say Paytm gets 10,000 uh, clicks in a day. And out of those 10,000, let's say there is no sale. People just come onto the website, look into the website, look into various products, and don't buy in. Right. So, I, this keeps getting happening. The audio keeps getting lost. Not really sure. So what happens, there are 10,000 people who click on the ad and opt. So sorry guys, not really sure why this is getting uh, disconnected again and again. I'll just try to get my another laptop right now. All right, so I'm just connecting. I'm so sorry, not really sure why Kodu meeting is acting weird today. I can see there are more people joining in. So we have Vinay and we have someone by the name of Android attendee. Not really sure what your name is. Okay, guys, uh, some serious trouble with uh, go to meeting. Why is that? Not really sure. I'm just trying to connect with the other laptop. All right, so I've done that. Just give me a minute.
So just want to check, can you guys hear me? I believe now you can. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's echoing now. It should not be. Now it should be perfect, I believe. I'm so sorry for the logistics issue. Not really sure. All right. Thank you. So. All right. So I'll just open the chat window. So what you were saying, we were discussing about the convergence part. Why would someone run a Google Ads, right? I was trying to make you understand why a particular advertiser, let's say, who's selling across, uh, let's say, women watches, okay? Somebody who's selling across women watches gets his or her advertisement with the help of Google AdWords uh, either on the top or on the right-hand side. So let's say this particular person, this particular advertiser, they all are advertiser, Ashford.com, Shop Clues, Kapoor Watch, because this is the ads part, right? Made in China, Crafts Villa, Snapdeal, Kapoor Watch, or these three. These three and the ones over here, they all are running across Google AdWords. I hope you guys would agree. Now let's say if this is the one which is uh, kadawiki.com, or let's take an example of Kapoor Watch. If I click on Kapoor Watch, okay, I am, who am I? I am the actual uh, user of the search engine who is looking to buy women watch. Okay, let's say I want to gift a uh, women watch to my, a watch to my wife. I, what I do, I try, try to type in buy women watches. All right. So, what do you say next time attendance this class? Uh, I'm not really sure what exactly you mean. And I am not, uh, I can't even see your name. Okay, let's say somebody clicks on it. I click on Kapoor Watch Company. I'm the Google search engine user. I'm a search engine user. I click on Kapoor Watch and I'm trying to buy a men's, a women watch. Okay, I click over here. And let's see what happens. All these watches comes in. My goodness, these guys are running their advertisements in a very uh, bad way. Because when I type in women watches, only the women watch should be shown across to me, guys. Now, this is a learning. What, do you remember the keyword which I have typed in, guys? I have typed in a keyword which is different to what I am seeing right now over here. Do you guys? Can you guys learn something out of it? If you see the keyword which I have typed in and the products which I am getting to see, are they in sequence, guys? Are they uh, the same thing? Is it the same thing which I am? I was looking for? Would like to know from each one of you. What keyword did I type in and what did I get in return with the ad of the pool watch company? So Abhishek says no. Can you just, uh, can you guys elaborate? What did I type in and what did I get? And is it a good thing? So looking for answer. For, so Abhishek says women watches and we got unisex watches. I can see rather these all are, yeah, these are unisex watches, absolutely. Right, does everybody, so Sam says women watches we had typed in, right. Is everybody on the same page? Vinit, did you see, did you actually check that? And what, Rajiv, Yarshika says yes, all right. And how about others? So this is a very wrong uh, Google AdWords, guys, which is happening by this organization. So whosoever is running Google AdWords for this particular organization, Kapoor Watch Company, uh, they are not really doing well because of which they might end up paying a lot of money from their pocket because you, can you see if I was looking for a women watch and if I click on a particular ad and I land on to a page which is called a landing page, right? So Rajiv, but still it is getting hit for both men and women, which is not right, Rajiv. That's what I want to tell you. We are not looking for hits. See, uh, we are looking for conversions in lesser number of clicks. The point is not to get as much traffic as you want. We are never looking for traffic. This is one of the myths which many people say that we want traffic. We want traffic onto our website. No. Till the time people are not going to get onto your website and buy things, it will be a total waste of money. 
can you see if what will happen in this case rajiv i tell you what is the bad thing and what could have been the ideal thing what is what is kapoor watch company losing out in this case is that whenever someone who's typing in buy women watches and somehow clicks on uh, the kapoor watch there is always going to be a bounce when i say bounce what exactly it means let's say if i click onto the kapoor watch i would you know see that oh it it doesn't have the women watch it is just showcasing me uh, women and men both i might get pissed off i might get pissed off and i might close it and this is generally which happens because whereas if i open another website which is doing it some very right would be amazon i know amazon does it right so if i click on amazon you would see only women watches being showcased across to her what will happen if i am looking for women watches i will go ahead and keep i will stay on to this website i will keep looking on to the products i would look at the price i would look at the description i would look at the pictures and then maybe i might end up buying in something but the chances but the uh, uh, overall proportion uh, or the chances of buying in product from kapoor watch company was very less and from this particular organization amazon is going to be high let's say amazon is paying 100 rupees per click to google and kapoor watch company is paying also paying 100 rupees per uh, click what amazon for an example in a day uh, you know i'm taking thing a hypothetical situation amazon out of 10 clicks might be able to sell four watches and kapoor watch might be able to sell zero or just one watch because of those 10 clicks 10 clicks for kapoor watch would be 10 into 100 would be 1000 rupees and for similarly for amazon would be 10 clicks into 100 rupees per click would be 1000 by spending 1000 rupees amazon is getting four sales by spending or five sales by spending 1000 rupees kapoor watch is getting not even a single sale or just one sale right does that really make uh, so you know a marketer is one who helps you get maximum conversions for lesser amount of money that's what a good marketer is mark you know it's uh, somebody who tries to get you a lot of traffic and which uh, doesn't get converted is not a good marketer it's only on the basis of the sales it's only on the basis of the conversions guys does that clear your doubt rajiv or do you still have uh, one of say something i can surely help you in that all right clear your doubt all right so we have sudha also joining in i believe sudha can't really hear me all right so this is about the conversion part is actually about sales okay one is sales there are few uh, organizations who don't sell in something for example let's say there are non e-commerce website okay so let's say if i uh, let's say i have a website which provides digital marketing courses all right so i have got one of the center which is based out of in gazibad one in new delhi one in indrapuram one in uh, gurgaon and all that so i got four centers let's say somebody type in digital marketing courses in gazibad presses enter all right now somehow you can see plenty of my competitors having their uh, stuff over here then that's my uh, what do you say my listing as a digital marketing part shala then you have digital marketing part shala over here also let's say somebody clicks over here and comes on to my website okay there is an ad and somebody comes on to my website now i don't sell things online i don't uh, let's say and i do actually i do sell my courses online i do sell my Uh, i do accept payment online but let's say if i don't accept i am uh, i am an offline business what generally people do in that case they go ahead and have a form fill up page they'll have a form fill up and they try to collect as many leads as possible when i say leads leads are those form fill ups people sharing in their name email address and phone numbers that is some sort of a conversion conversions are the leads in this case or you can call the form fill ups these form fill ups are sometimes called uh, they are also named as leads guys leads l e a d s i have written that down in the chat window you can hear uh, you can actually see that right so some of the uh, 
uh, businesses which are not selling anything on the internet, they might end up collecting as many leads. What will happen whenever the leads will get connected, their telecalling uh, department or their any other sales department might take that database, would start emailing those leads, would start calling up those people and uh, tell them that yes, we do sell across such and such stuff. In case you want to come across to our center, feel free to do that, to a showroom, feel free to do that and, and, and browse through our products, right? So that is a definition overall guys for conversions and that's the only reason why we run these Google ads, right? We run Google ads uh, for only with the purpose of getting conversions and conversions can be either leads, which is a form fill up, you know, the contact details or it can be a sign up. Some people actually do it for just, uh, they just focus on getting as much downloads of their softwares. So let's say somebody who's selling uh, softwares and wants to just offer free downloads. So you know, uh, downloads of software can be a conversion. Downloading of uh, an ebook can be also named as a conversion. All right, or maybe uh, making people attend, uh, making people attend your webinar. You know, run, you run a campaign and you make people attend your webinar can just only be a conversion. This might not give you some uh, what do you say, money instantly, but this, what happens, your leads, your sales might come in at a later stage. You try to engage certain set of audience and that set of audience can buy in products from you at a later stage. Or if it's, if these things are not your conversion,
sorry guys i think you can hear me now but uh, this is there's some serious trouble with uh, go to meeting it got crashed on my mac laptop i'm now connected again on my windows uh, some serious trouble just give me more moment some more uh, minutes thank you so much moses thank you arshika thanks vinay all right so i hope you guys can hear me now so sorry for the trouble guys all right thanks <clears throat> some serious issue with go to meeting earlier in the other laptop it was the audio issue and in this laptop it's uh, the it got corrupted it got uh, crashed somehow all right so conversion part is i hope i have made that clear now let's get started with understanding the nitty gritties of google adwords the very first thing which i want to tell you today is about the google adwords structure now google adwords structure is very similar to guys uh, the way we structure our website the way we structure our website let's say it's amazon website i open the amazon website once again okay when i open the amazon website if you see there are plenty of categories over here and then plenty of categories and plenty of sub categories also being here you can see women general gift a uh, children gift sports sales men and so forth and so on right and underneath men if i click let's say if i go to amazon for first of all the main website and over there i can see plenty of categories over here you uh, i can see books and then underneath books i have hindi books as a separate one tamil books as a separate one uh, and then the literature fiction indian writing let's say if i go in uh, inside kindle ebooks you know the major category was the books and the sub category was kindle ebooks and underneath kindle ebooks let's say if i want to have want to check much more uh, ebooks i can have sub sub category which is a third level categorization let's say this is uh, this is about business and economics all right these are kindle ebooks so the major category was first of all the books and underneath books it was the kindle ebooks number so number 1 was book number 2 was kindle ebooks and number 2 ki uh, kindle ebooks uh, there was number 3 business and economics kindle ebooks only so why do you think this categorization why things are segregated and managed in a website this way i mean i have a reason to ask you this because if i if you will uh, answer this if you will understand the this reason for i had dissecting your website then you will also understand why do we have a google adwords structure also so why does websites create all these categories and then sub categories and then sub sub categories why do why do websites create guys like this so easy to structure absolutely anybody else who wants to jump in and say something about it abhishek harshika for customers use absolutely sam sudha vinay why would somebody do that for customers use for easy to structure absolutely i hope you would also agree to that vinay and we have sam 
I have someone by the name of Triple S, not really sure what's your name. So somebody by the name of Triple S, all right. So it's all about easiness. People can, uh, under the categories wise, people can search under the category wise, absolutely. Similarly, similarly, if you can search, if you are the customers, if you are the buyers of products for on Amazon, then you would want everything to be segregated. Similarly, Google AdWords structure, Google AdWords also have a structure guys, which you don't get to see at the front end. If I see a particular ad at the front end, which is this Amazon one, okay, when the Amazon ad is here, I won't get to know what is the structure which Amazon has created for its Google AdWords because the AdWords account access of Amazon is going to be only with Amazon. That is a back-end story. That is a back-end story. The Google AdWords account of Amazon is going to be visible only to those people who are managing the AdWords account of Amazon. Since we can only see the front-end part, we as visitors, we as search engine users can only get to see the ads which is uh, showcasing, showcased over here for, by Amazon or by Paytm or by Kata Wiki. But what is the overall structure of these uh, the AdWords account structure of these websites, that is not known to us. We can only know the AdWords account structure for our website, for our account, right? So the AdWords account structure, how it works like, let me show you, just give me a moment. I'll just open my PDF. So that is open in the other laptop. So I go into the Google AdWords, just a sec. All right, so I'm just opening it in a while. Okay, this is an AdWords uh, certificate, guys. That's how it looks like. All right, so which uh, each one of you would be getting from us, from digital marketing, mashallah. So some basic yarn, I would come on to the AdWords account structure. So I've already told you about the PPC and the SEO difference. I've already told you about uh, the difference between AdWords and AdSense in the last session, right? And Google AdWords are not just the text, text ads, Google AdWords helps us to create uh, image ads and ad, uh, video ads too, right? So we'll study all that. Going further down, letting you know about the AdWords structure, just to say. So just skipping this, I'll come back to this in a short while. Right, here you go. So Google, so just, uh, have a look into this and you probably might have to just understand, take it the way I'm telling you, but I'll also make you see practically the overall Google AdWords structure, guys. We always have one Google AdWords account which is used only for a specific website. Let's say today if I have digital marketing, Patshala as one of my website, I'll have only one Google AdWords account which is going to be unique uh, targeting only that particular website. I cannot connect five different websites with one sim singular account. For every website, there is going to be a unique Google AdWords account. And a unique Google AdWords account can be created with the help of your uh, same Google credentials, your Gmail credentials. All you need is a Google account, username and a password, which is very similar to your uh, Gmail account, username and password. You just need that and need to sign up across on adwords.google.com.com adwords.google.com so here you go I'll just open that adwords.google.com 
I'll just share that across with you, the URL in the chat window too. Right, so I mean, uh, just don't go on to what exactly you can see over here. So adwords.google.com is what you need to open. And once you do that, you need a unique email ID and a password. What was over here in the AdWords account, I was already logged in, okay? My already account, my AdWords account is linked up over here. You always get a unique customer ID for your AdWords account, guys. There is a 10 digit, there is a 10 digit customer ID which is unique to every Google AdWords account. It cannot be same for any other. Whatever customer ID you get, it can never be same, it cannot be per, similar to any other AdWords account, all right? And the other thing which I want to tell you about Google AdWords account is that when you have one single account which opens up with one single email address and a password, you have one single billing information. We always need one particular source of uh, payment to pay to Google, either our credit card gets connected or our debit card can also gets connected to our AdWords account guys. That is the way we actually pay to Google whenever we want our website to rank higher on Google AdWords, uh, on Google search engine results. Whenever we want our website to rank higher on Google search engine results, we need to run AdWords account, we need to uh, run AdWords account and pu publish our website, create ads and get our ad advertisement on the top guys. The other thing besides having account at the top, we can have specific different campaigns. Now this is very similar to the kind of categories and then sub categories and then, and then sub sub categories which I told you. The major thing is account is very similar to like the way we have our website. So we had Amazon website, similarly we have a Google AdWords account uh, which is the topmost thing and like Amazon website did have uh, various major categories, one of them being men, another being women, another being children, another being so forth and so on. Similarly we can have campaigns as the major categories, right? And underneath campaigns we have sub, ca sub campaigns which are also called ad groups. So underneath campaigns therein comes in ad groups guys. It's just like let's say this is men, so this would be uh, men jeans and men t-shirts or there can be another ad groups, uh, maybe uh, men accessories, men uh, formal wear, men uh, casual wear and so forth. So you can, have, you can have plenty of campaigns guys. It's not that only two campaigns are allowed and for every campaign there are only two ad groups allowed. No, if this is just to showcase you. There are plenty of, uh, uh, you can create n number of campaigns and n number of ad groups. There is no limit to it. So for every account you can have multiple campaigns and after for every campaign you can have multiple ad groups. The way it should be structured is in the same format your website has been structured. That is the best way. Because if you have the men section you should have, uh, you would have sub categorization under the men that should be the ad group and underneath ad group comes in uh, ads, uh, ad copies and the ad copies are the same thing which we get to see on the Google, right? So what we get to see on the Google search is that whenever we type in a specific keyword that is an ad copy, the ad text which I talk about. Let, so if I type in let's say the same keyword by women watches. This is the ad copy. This is the ad copy which comes at the bottom, right? Which is a part of the ad group. By looking at this particular ad, the by women watches, I cannot really understand what would be the overall AdWords account structure of Amazon website. It's not known to us. It's at the back end. I'm only Amazon guys can know about it. But the way, great way to actually structure your AdWords account is in the similar fashion the way your website is. So you have uh, let's say major categories, your major categories being books, all right, just to check, sorry. So your books being major category, movies being another major category, mobiles and tablets being another major category, so forth and so on. So these are like campaigns, right? 
this would actually, these major categories which where I'm scrolling my mouse, these all are campaigns, guys, right? Let's say if I go on to the books part, underneath books you have plenty of subcategorization. These are sort of ad groups, right? The ones over here, the subcategories are sort of ad groups. If I click on any one of them and then I go on to much major subcategories, then underneath ad groups, I can create ad copies for all of them one by one. I'll show you live campaigns. I'll show you live uh, AdWords account. And okay, so we have Moses. Moses saying in, in a private chat, you mean to say we can have multiple advertisers running their campaign under one? No, I never said that. Moses, you cannot have one uh, multiple advertisers uh, in one single AdWord account. It's only my client central which allows you to do that. I, I believe you have some information about Google AdWords. For that, you need an MCC account, which is called My Client Central, and I already have that. That is given only to the agencies. You can see these all are my clients. I have BLK Hospitals. I have another uh, doctor who's my uh, client. I have so many people who are uh, connected. These are all AdWords accounts. You can see the customer IDs of my all my clients are mentioned over here. Right? Does that make sense? Moses, you can type in your... Uh, query within the public chat so that uh, uh, others can also uh, learn from that. So I hope that shouldn't be a problem. All right, so that's with the AdWords account going back and telling you further more about the AdWords. Does that really help you? I mean, did I answer your question, Moses? Moses? Let me know if I did or not. In case you have further more questions, you can let me know. So you need a unique email address and a password. Along with that, you need a billing information, right? All right, thanks, Moses. Then the campaign guys, which I was telling you, which is the major category. All right, so Rajiv says, for each client, we need to have a separate account. Absolutely, Rajiv. Till the time you're not an agency which spends up, uh, which doesn't have an MCC account. An MCC account is actually meant for agencies. <clears throat> So every client, it's always preferable to have a different AdWords account, which is which is a very simple. I mean, it takes only a couple of minutes to create a, a Google account, right? So no matter how many clients you have, you can create a different AdWords account for them, and uh, it's preferable that in case you become uh, you're working for an agency to have a MCC account, so that you don't have to log into each and every client's. AdWords account one after another. MCC account guys stands for My Client Central Account. There is a criteria for MCC. Uh, see, MCC account, you can open it for free, but if you want much major benefits for MCC account, Rajiv, what Google says, $10,000 in three months is the kind of spending which Google recommends. So in case you want much major benefits with MCC accounts, so there are plenty of benefits. You get, uh, you know, much lower CPC. You get the Google. You become a Google partner. You get a lot of coupons and much major things. And uh, it's very easy to get your ads approved. Uh, if you have, a, if you, if your entire total spending on all your clients is ten thousand dollars in totality within three months then you can actually have a great MCC account. My MCC stands for My Client Central, which only agencies have. And uh, so Arshika says we also get projects related to Google. Absolutely. So now I have a great question from Harshika who says, do we get uh, projects for Google AdWords even if, if in case we want to uh, really earn money out of uh, Google AdWords? Absolutely. Let me tell you a couple of websites where you can actually be part of and create your, uh, you can create your profile there, appear, apply for projects there, and appear for the interviews for whatever uh, applications you're going to be submitting. This is one of the website called Upwork.com, where you can go ahead and earn money out of uh, the skill sets which you're acquiring in yourself right now. So you can log in. I can just log in and then show you. 
I already have an account on Upwork. All right, so that's my account right now. Let's say if I click on find jobs, all you need to do is you go into upwork.com, do the entire sign up process and after signing up, create I mention all your details. You know, when I say all your details, your first name, last name, your address, uh, it will ask you plenty of other things. Maybe a sort of a resume kind of thing. And it, let's say if I type in, these are the category. Uh, search engine optimization is a major category. And then you have, okay, these are my specific categories if I type in. you would see plenty of uh, jobs which have been posted across for Google AdWords. All right, so, so it says lean set startup website, need someone to set up the Google AdWords, right? And then it's all SEO and it's all SEO. So there are more SEO projects which goes without saying guys. There are more of SEO projects and less of uh, Google AdWords, but uh, still even they are there very much. So you have Google AdWords, PPC and SEM specialist, digital marketing campaign. So I'll just show you a couple of more. <clears throat> So Bing PPC keywords, AdWords manager needed. These are the kind of, so let me just show you the kind of, uh, <clears throat> the kind of requirement these guys have written. They say we have, uh, we have created a quick lean uh, startup website and would like to get maximum value out of our AdWords setup as we only intend to run for around a week to test the viability of our business idea. The website address is this. The website has been created through Squarespace, which is one of the uh, technology through which websites get, gets created. The website will be marketed in Australia only. I have a list of key search terms that I feel will be relevant, and these are attached for your reference. So that has been attached. What is this guy saying? Uh, is asking for certain questions. So what are you really strong at and blah, blah, blah. There are plenty of people who have submitted their uh, proposals. So there are seven people who have submitted their proposals six hours ago, seven hours, uh, and so forth and so on. And uh, let's see, what what is this individual, who, who is uh, this individual gonna hire out of those seven people who have applied? Similarly, there is another job, guys, which says Google AdWords, PPC, which is pay-per-click, and SEM, which is search engine marketing. Search engine marketing and PPC specialist uh, digital marketing campaign. Somebody who runs digital marketing campaign is needed. He needs to hire two freelancers. His budget is just $100. So it would be a, a smaller amount of work maybe, but I can see a lot of. So this is just for, uh, this might be a lesser amount. This he might be able to spend in much more. So I can see this guy has is from Hong Kong and he has spent 465 so far and he gives on an average the kind of money he provides to his uh, uh, for people whom he hires on an average he has given ten dollars and 25 25 cents that's the kind of money which people are making uh, whom who have been hired by him so he says this is an extraordinary opportunity to get highly paid blah 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 and this person would be working very closely with the president and global content marketing team and selling companies product. The person needs to be organized and understand success factors. Just read this down. Success factors for Google AdWords, online paid advertising, social media, content marketing, and blah, blah, blah. The person will be responsible for implementing methods to improve our paid advertising spend for acquiring new customers. It's the same thing, which is the conversions. Acquiring new customers is the conversion thing. It includes the keyword research, analyzing websites, documenting the SEM changes. <clears throat> Whatever changes you make, you let the team know about it and all that stuff. So it's all about creating the campaigns, 
and running those campaigns so that the end the client gets benefit out of it right similarly there is another one which is this it says adwords manager needed it's a 30 hours per per week kind of a thing so if you are confident that you can drive sales and manage profitable adwords campaign for our website which is this please contact me we can discuss you taking over the management of our adwords account currently the adwords account is not providing an roi so if i can find someone to work with on a long term basis that can make this campaign work that would be great i want to hire blah blah does that answer your question so it's a very great website guys you can similarly have create your uh, profiles on another another website that is called elance.com right freelancer doesn't have great uh, <clears throat> what do you say uh, when it, they are not highly paid projects which are available on freelancer otherwise it's not uh, it's it's not bad it's a great idea to go ahead and start with freelancer also but the only disadvantage of freelancer is that you always have uh, uh, stingy people actually coming onto that website, you know, who don't want to uh, spend in a lot of money. So Elance is another one. So let's say I click on I want to uh, find work. So Elance and Upwork have actually got uh, merged. Earlier there were two different organizations. Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, if I click on Elance, it's the same. All right, so you can go ahead with <clears throat> Upwork and maybe other websites like Freelancer is another one, which is a great one, guys. So hope uh, that does answer your question. Coming back again to the Google AdWords account structure, guys. All right, so <clears throat> on a campaign level, you can always select, excuse me. <clears throat> you can campaign level, you can always select a daily budget you can let Google know that you are ready to spend in only uh, 100 rupees in a day or a hundred dollars in a day on a daily basis that is the maximum which you can shell out from your pocket and you don't want to go ahead and pay in more than that does that make sense so also you can do a lot of location targeting let's say I run my business uh, for a specific location let's say you know I'm an advertiser and and uh, I have a let's say a car garage okay if I I have a car garage which is catering to a specific uh, location which is the West Terry location I can select some of the areas within the West Terry location also I'll show you in a very practical fashion and I'll create an AdWords account uh, an AdWords campaign for that then I can also select the language targeting. It's only not uh, the English uh, language, uh, which is the uh, which is by default. English is by default in uh, language which is set across an AdWords account. But if in case I want to target those set of people who are using Google search engine in another language, let's say people are using Hindi, uh, Google Hindi search engine, I can target them. Google Urdu, Google Arabic, Google French, or whatnot, so forth and so on. I can easily go ahead and target on the language side and next then comes in distribution preference which I'll tell you what exactly it is when I'll open the AdWords account and also on a campaign level I can decide when my entire campaign so all the ad groups and ad copies uh, which are coming within the campaign would actually be shown across on that specific location that specific language and the entire budget for all the ad groups is going to be common which is going to be the daily campaign budget plus I can let Google know that when do I want to start my campaign and when do I want to end my campaign uh, so let's say if I am running a campaign which is for uh, the New Year's Eve okay which is on 31st of December today I start the campaign let's say today it's 29th and I want to make sure that by the that the tickets are sending across online only on only till 31st now I go and you know enjoy my New Year's Eve too and I was the one uh, who was also running the AdWords account somehow I don't open my AdWords account on first and second also and then on third on third of January I open my AdWords account what I see that my AdWords was still running even after the 31st of December 
even on 1st of January and on 2nd of January, I had end up spending let's say 10,000 rupees on 1st and 10,000 rupees on 2nd of January. It's a loss of money for me. The ideal situation would have been that I would have stopped the AdWords account on 31st itself. But does that really mean that I have to stay online and I don't? I cannot enjoy my New Year's Eve, which is not the case. I can set, uh, uh, I can schedule the entire AdWords account in a certain fashion that the campaign can stop by itself on 31st. I can give instruction. I can set a rule within the AdWords account that the advertisement should actually stop uh, on this particular date at this particular time. So, uh, you know, seasonal offers and all these event-based promotions, that can be done very easily, right? And uh, so that's the AdWords account structure, guys. There are, so in order to make you understand it with the help of an example, this is with the help of an example, how the overall AdWords account structure looks like. You can see this is one of the organization which is into uh, automobile repairing, all right? So automobile repairing, one of the campaign which they create is this only, auto repair. So let's say this is into automobiles, one of the organization which is into automobiles, they might be selling it, they might be uh, selling new automobiles, selling uh, secondhand automobiles and they are also into auto repair. So their campaign one is auto repair, their campaign two might be selling of automobiles, campaign three might be selling of secondhand automobiles. One of the first campaign which is they are which they are dealing in one of their major cat, uh, service is auto automobile repair. Okay, that is the campaign. The sub categorization of automobile repair are three major things. Underneath automobile repair, they also do oil change, which comes as a part of automobile repair. They also do brake repair, which is again part of auto repair. Then we have AC repair, which is also part of automobile repair. Hope it makes sense, guys. So you have AC repair as one of the ad group, brake repair as another ad group, and oil change as another ad group, right? So you can actually connect key, uh, you know, uh, these overall ad groups with one major campaign, which is the overall major theme of a particular campaign. And under, underneath every ad group, you would create a uh, uh, ad copy. I did tell you underneath ad groups there are ad copies and keywords. So what you can see there is a, a theme, a specific theme which is getting followed. Now this might be because of the color issues might not be visible to you perfectly. Let me see if I can make you see it perfectly. Alright, so what you can see over here is for the ad group one oil change the kind of keywords which are being used is discount oil change express oil change oil change shops quick oil change synthetic oil change there is a particular theme which has been used within this ad group which is oil change you can see all the keywords over here are having oil change as one of the common thing one of the common things within this keywords is the oil change part right it doesn't say buy oil, buy oil, right? It's always talks about the oil change part. And similarly, the ad copy also talks the same thing. The ad copy, which is being created over here, the headline, which is written over here, we will be writing the headlines only, guys. The headlines, which is written over here, says discount oil change. And the description line one, this is called description line one and description line two, it also talks about the oil change. You can see the oil change, uh, text coming here, oil chain text coming on the headline in the description and also coming in the keywords part. Similarly, the ad group 2 which was part of that, uh, which was part of the major campaign which is automobile repair. In the brake repair, you can see the theme is same which is auto brake repair, brake check, brake repair shop, brake replacement, brake shops, right? More, more or less it's the same theme and similarly, it's a brake repair advertisement which is right up here. And also from the third point of view, if you could see, is the AC repair stuff and automobile uh, AC repair, automobile air conditioning, auto air condition repair, AC repair, AC repair, car AC repair, truck AC repair. The ad also talks about the same. So this is one of the great ways, guys, to actually get your AdWords account structured. 
this brings in a lot of relevancy and relevancy is very much needed when we are running adwords account so we'll do a live campaign and each one of you whosoever has actually joined uh, digital marketing bachala i'll be offering you a free website for that free website i'll make you also understand how to create and develop that website uh, in a non technical fashion you will also create adwords campaign for that key particular website of yours and also will help you to make it optimize and run all the campaigns whether it's an email campaign or a facebook campaign social media campaigns so google adwords and so forth and so on so in case you guys have registered with dmp just ping me across on whatsapp tomorrow i'll help you get your website uh, on a sooner basis and in case you haven't registered with the dmp as a paid subscriber you can ping me tomorrow i can help you to get registered all right so now coming on to some of some major uh, basic skies of ad copy are we all good with uh, the example which i have given with the ad uh, adwords account structure guys let me know with a yes or no so that i can move ahead yes says whenever yes says moses all right how about others uh, yes says rajiv all right thanks yes says sam all right guys thank you so how about others i have someone by the name of triple s not really sure thanks harshika so uh can't really know what exactly is your name triple s uh let me know what exactly is your name please in case you don't do that so can you hear me not really sure whether this person can hear me or not all right so now the other thing guys which i want to talk about is ad copy creation right now what exactly ad copy is the ad copy is the text okay thank you venkat so i think i just want to check with you were you able to understand what we have uh, covered so far so wanted to yes all right thanks so i was just waiting for your reply also venkat thank you so when i talk about ad copy creation there are certain basics to that also uh before coming on to that i would like to ask you certain questions let's say if you guys you now the question is let's say if each one of you types uh, is looking for a 8 megapixel camera all right you're looking for an 8 megapixel camera there are two different ad ads which are written over here one is online camera store then www.example.com and it says we sell main brands that great prices and there is a uh, option 2 which is 8 megapixel cameras and www.example.com 10% of digital cameras free delivery by today which one are you going to click and why so again this is very important to understand from a google uh, when we are learning google adwords so out of these two which one do you think so based on good content so uh rajiv says second free delivery uh, harshika says based on content free delivery is the one right vinay says 8 megapixel camera once all right harshika says number one all right i uh, sam says pref i prefer the second one and sam why would you prefer the second one so harshika your answer is number one or number two because you said Moses says 8 megapixel because I want that absolutely I can understand that Rajiv says because of the discount part and Harshika says the free delivery one all right so all of you are saying for the second one I got you in content we got all information in uh in deep is that what you're saying uh Vinay absolutely guys the second is the right answer the second uh ad so is always going to get maximum hits and maximum conversions when the keyword is actually 8 megapixel camera i'm not interested in looking at uh, an ad which says that we sell everything or that it is an online camera store if i'm typing in 8 megapixel camera i have two different ads and one of the ads says the same thing that yes we sell 8 megapixel camera i would first of all this is not reason one i'll go to them reason number two will i'll go for them is because of the discount number two reason 10% off number 3 reason i'm getting some more options some more uh, some more uh, uh, extra features extra benefits which is free delivery if i buy today right so there are three major reasons 
So that's what we have to also keep in mind while we have to write ads for our clients or for our advertisements for our website when we are be creating when we'll be creating ads we have to keep in mind that first of all we have to be in sync with the keywords I'll tell you how to how to get align the keywords with the ad copies the keywords would be chosen by us and for what keyword what ads will appear that will also be chosen by us so many people what they do they actually take a, a very generic uh, ad and they run it for all the keywords which are there if you remember in the starting of the in starting of the session today the Kapoor watch company was actually doing it wrong they were actually running a very basic ad and uh, which was on the keyword buy women watches somebody who clicks on the ad also they were actually making that person land onto a, a page which was not at all serving the women watches it was serving another one so that these all things really separates a good AdWords professional with uh, someone who doesn't know AdWords perfectly right so the overall theme has to be perfect there has to be a call of action and something really uh, a key a core strength area of your uh, product so you know let's say if you are uh, providing something extra you're providing something different or you're providing something which will entice the end customer you should actually write that down within the content of your advertisement so they have done it right they have written that they are offering 10% discount they have written that they are offering free delivery these are called call to actions guys what are these calls just do remember these are called call to actions whenever we actually create ads or even landing pages landing pages are those web pages where the end customer uh, lands after clicking on the advertisement right after clicking on the advertisement the particular individual whenever he, uh, wherever he or she lands is a landing page even in the landing page we need to have call to action even in the advertisement there has to be call of action call of action can be different let's say somebody says that uh, submit this form and get uh, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and get a discount coupon submit this form and enter into a lucky draw these are all call to actions somebody says free delivery free shipping EMI options available 10% discount right now all these are call to actions all right so moving ahead I want to tell you more about ad copy creation today I'm telling you uh, these are all in the theoretical part guys in the next session we'll do all practical okay and before that I would want each one of you to have your website ready I'll get you get you your website so that you can create your uh, PPC accounts for that particular website only the next uh, uh, theoretical part which I want to tell you when we are creating these ads these ad copies these search text ads there are certain restrictions so there are certain guidelines by Google Google says there is one thing which is called headline and headline is 25 characters uh, the limit for uh, headline is 25 characters then we have a description line one which is 35 characters even a single space is counted as a as a character guys a single space is also counted as a character then you have a description line 2 being 35 characters uh, then you have a display URL and a destination URL I'll tell you the difference between these two but just I mean you have to mark this up 25 is the headline which is this you know you can see the headline over here the description line one is this over here it's all merged description line one maybe might be up till over here description line two might be up till over here starting from here till here so 35 and 35 for description line one and description line two and for headline is headline one then the URL which you see over here is actually called the display URL guys this is the display URL hope it makes sense this is the display URL guys whenever somebody will click on this ad what will open will this particular link will open or there would be another URL any idea any uh, uh, what do you say any guesses you want to make the link will open absolutely and not this link will open actually there's always a difference guys in the link which you the URL which you see over here most of the times 
most of the times the URL which you see on the ad is different to what will open in the end of the landing page. That's the reason why there is a concept of display URL and a destination URL. Let me help you understand with the help of an example. Let's say I take Google again and in the Google search box I type in buy women watches. Okay. When I type in, can you see it says www.amazon.in buy plus watches, right? And it has the headline over here and it does have the uh, description line one and then description line two also, all right? This is description line one and description line two. And I'll come on to these parts, guys. There are few more things to a particular advertisement. So these are called ad extensions, which I'll come on to it at a later stage. But coming on to the URL part, if I click on this, let's say I open it in it a new tab, this URL is not going to open. The URL up till this point, which is the main domain, is going to be there for sure, whatever will open. But the words after the domain, which is this, is not going to be same. It's going to be something different. Let me open this in a new tab. So it's amazon.in forward slash buy plus watches. I have opened, I have clicked on this ad and opened it in a new tab. This is the new tab. Can you see? I told you that till amazon.in it's going to be same and after that it's a huge URL. It's a, such a long URL guys. What actually happens, this is called the destination URL. The actual URL which opens up, the actual URL which opens up after clicking on the ad is the destination and the URL which you get to see over here in the ad uh, copy is called the display URL. You know, the one which you see is not the one which will appear. Because there is a restriction, character limit to your display URL also, which is 35 characters. This is 25, the top one. Then you have description line one being uh, 35, and then you have description line two being 35. By end, the display URL also has a, got a restriction of 35 characters. Let's say if this huge URL, which might be a 1000 character URL, if it would be, sure Moses, I'll show you. If, so have a look over here again, the difference in the de uh, destination and display URL. I'll start fresh. Let's say I open google.com. <clears throat> I type in by women watches. Uh, let's say I type in by Titan women watches this time. Okay. I press enter. The Amazon ad which is coming up over here, it has the display URL, which is the URL which you can see over here. It does have Amazon.in forward slash by plus Titan plus watches. All right. This is the destination uh, display URL display. This is getting displayed to the search engine user. When the search engine users clicks on the ad and opens it in a new tab, just have a look carefully. I'm opening it. It gets opened in a new tab. It's opening right now over here in a new tab. All right. I open this. You can see the destination URL which is coming up over here is pretty huge. I have highlighted the overall URL. The only thing which is common between destination and display URL is this Amazon.in thing, which is at the beginning, right? The display URL was pretty short in character limits because it has a 35 character limit. Now, if I open, if I copy this display URL and I open it in a different tab, you will see this uh, page might not be there. This page might not be existing. So I copy the display URL and I paste it in a new tab altogether and I press enter. It is actually a, a 404 which means that there is no specific page which exists over here. Right? Does that make sense? 
the difference between display URL and a destination URL so far? I hope, uh, did I answer your question, Moses? <clears throat> let me let me know if it, uh, if it was clear. If not, I can still clear your doubts, guys. So Sam, Venkat, Vinay, Rajiv, Moses, Harshika, have you guys understood the difference between display and a destination URL? Or right. yes, says Harshika. How about others? Yes, says Vinay. Yes, says Rajiv. Yes, says Sam. Yes, says Venkat. Okay, sure, Moses. Absolutely. Go ahead and ask a question. Okay, so Moses says when there is limit, I guess you are typing in your question, right? How do we do such long URL? See in the destination URL, there is a limit of 1024 characters. In the destination URL, you can have a 1024 characters long URL, all right, which doesn't get seen in the front end. But in the front end, you can only see the display URL, which has a character limit of 35 characters for their display URL. Does that make sense? So there is a character limit to the destination URL, which is this, all right? So this is 1024 characters only. You cannot take a destination URL more than 1024, and this is the display URL, which cannot have more than 35. Does that answer your question, Moses? Are we good or, okay, it doesn't, all right, sure, sure. Please uh, let me know what part I is not clear. I'll surely go ahead and uh, help you in that. So do you want to rephrase your question, Moses? See the tone, so same what you were explained. I'm not really sure what exactly your question is. See, I, I'm telling you there is a character limit of 35 characters over here. You'll get to see when we'll do it practically in the next session. In the display URL, which is written over here, you cannot have more than 35 characters. And the destination URL, is not going to be more than 1024. This is just over here to showcase something, all right? This is not which is going to open. When somebody will click on this ad, the display URL will never open. It's only the destination URL which will open. If I click on this, the destination URL, which is maximum 1024 characters, will only open. The Google has got this concept of display URL just with the idea that people who have a lot of long URL, you know, a URL which is way too long, that should get shortened up, right? There should be a way to shorten it up, shorten it up. Otherwise, what will happen if a long URL is being written over here, then it will take a lot of real estate. It will take a lot of space, and Google will not be able to uh, showcase each and every long URL, right? 
so when we copy and paste it the display url the display url is always not going to be a url which is uh, which is of an actual web page it's not necessary to have a display url of a web page which is existing right now so the domain has to be same the domain name has to be same in the display and destination url but the display url is not necessarily needed to be of a particular web page which is present on the website that's what google says google says you can type in anything i could have written over here amazon.in and forward slash 12345678910 i could have written anything but these guys have written the keywords because it always helps in optimizing the ad when you have the keywords written in the display url also so it's not necessarily that the am um, the, the display url should be there of a particular a uh, web page which is existing on the website you can actually have a random url a uh, random word written over here which is of a particular web page which is not even existing do you want to unmute yourself and then speak out uh, i'm not uh, really sure is your question being answered or not let me just unmute yourself should i go ahead and unmute you and then help you with your question i've unmuted you Yeah, Moses, go ahead. Are you there? All right, so I have unmuted you. You can speak. can i move ahead if uh, in you case uh, you are not able to uh, speak out your question please uh, i'm just uh, i have to take everybody in tandem i believe everybody uh, is waiting for you to actually answer your question or you know, put in your question so oh, why don't you go ahead and ask your question i i would want you to get your doubt cleared please so instead of me uh, i mean absolutely i'll move ahead but i want you to go ahead and ask your questions uh, quickly please if possible i can't hear you i can't hear you can you type in your question i can hear the background noise at your end all right so i'm i'm muting you so that the background noise doesn't come in so you can you can type in your question no problem i'll take that so that's guys with uh the overall headline and a description line 1 and a description line 2 and the display and url and the destination url uh, characters limit so with the destination url it's 1024 characters guys all right which google has prescribed it's nothing that i have got anything to do with it you're slow at typing no problem i'm still here you can go ahead and type you take your time in typing i'll surely go ahead and explain that your so your uh, mic is also not working i made you I'll, i can unmute you again but it's taking a lot of time i've unmuted you again giving you another chance to go ahead and speak so i've unmuted you can you type in your question i'm not really sure uh all right so i'm i'm uh, i can't hear you again i can't hear you again i'm muting you again all right so guys the text add components moses you can type in no problem take your time in typing the question i'll address it i'll address your question so there are uh, no problem no, type in the question type in the question moses i'll take that so there is there are these components which is uh, the headlines i like did mention having your keyword part part of the 
headline is a great thing. So we saw that with the help of the previous example where 8 megapixel was the keyword and 8 megapixel was also part of the headline. We also saw with the previous example oil change was the common theme and that oil change keyword was made part of the headline and also the description line 1 and description line 2. Similarly the brake repair part was part of the was the theme overall and brake repair was part of the headline 1 headline and description line 1 description line 2. That's what I'm trying to say now after understanding the relevancy part the calls to action part also understanding the overall character limits and also understanding the difference between display URL and destination URL. I repeat once again display URL is just for displaying and it's not the URL of a particular web page which is existing in the website. It's not necessarily that you have to write in a URL which is there of, uh, of a particular web page which is of your website and destination URL is the URL of the landing page of a page which is existing. Whenever someone clicks on your ad, he or she will actually go on to the destination URL, not to the display URL. All right, you got it, great. So uh, having your keyword within the headline is uh, considered great and uh, the display URL can be different from the destination URL, right? And in uh, how it can be enhanced with the website links, I'll come on to that. So descript display URL 35, description has to be 35 only. I've already spoken about that, 25, 35, 35, 35. So it's 25, 35, 35, 35, three times 35. Just recall that. Anybody can ask you wherever, whether you are uh, applying for a job, you're going for an interview somewhere else, 25 is the headline and 35 description line 1, 35 description line 2, 35 the display URL and 1024 characters is for the destination URL. All right. Now let me make you understand some more things. Uh, there are a couple of examples which I want to showcase. Let's say there are these two major advertisements, okay, which say one of, the, one of them says frothing latte bean and it says we have many different types of coffee beans that you will love. There is no call to action which you can see over here. And it says uh, www.prothinglatebean.com, all right. And there is another ad, there is another version in a scenario too. It says gourmet coffee beans, premium coffee beans, French roast, so specialty blends. So the, you know, the, you can see very specifically, these are some great things about the product. And over here, there is nothing. There is no uh, unique things mentioned about the product. It says buy now, and it's the URL over here. The display URL in both the case is same, but the destination URL in, in scenario one is of the home page, right? The display and destination URL is kept same, which is of the home page. And in this option B, which is 1B, the display URL is the home page, but the destination URL is an internal page. It's an internal page of a particular website, uh, uh, you know, internal page of the same, of a particular website. What is happening, uh, I hope you might have got this, that 1A is not a great ad because of various reasons. It is not actually, the headline is not talking sense. Uh, if somebody has, really, uh, you know, in this example, uh, the ad, the keyword which was typed in was gourmet coffee beans. So over here, the gourmet coffee beans is not getting represented. It's only in the uh, option B. And over here, there is no specific uh, unique thing which is mentioned. So number two is also not, is wrong over here. It doesn't have great uh, specific content. And in number 1B, it's a specific stuff which is being looked at and also a call to action is there. And also the internal page. The internal page is the destination page. So the, the end user is going to the right destination where he or she will find that gourmet coffee beans. Right, so I hope it's all clear. I won't spend more time onto this. You guys might have got it. Another thing which I want to tell you theoretically today, before we move on to practical in the next session, uh, all right, I don't think there is anything practical. So there's going to be some more, so anything theoretical again. So in the next session, guys, we'll be talking about, we'll be, we'll open our AdWords account. 
we'll structure our AdWords account. I'll show you how to structure it and how to get the campaigns created, how to get the settings set up, whether it's in terms of selecting the uh, language, whether it's in terms of doing the ad scheduling, that when do you want the ad to run, when do you want the ad to get closed, and which language do you want to select, and what is the headline which have been created, what is the description line one, description line two, destination URL, we'll see all that and how different campaigns have got created and different ad groups underneath have got created. How do we create all that? The overall uh, daily budgeting, how it is being set up, we'll see all that. If in case I'll start today, it's almost 10-10, so it, it might not get end up, it might not, uh, it will be uh, cut in between. Just trying to showcase you one of my client's campaign over here, which is DLK Hospital, which is one of the renowned hospital out here in New Delhi. And they are, uh, if you are from Mumbai or any other part nearby there, and you might have heard of Nanavati Hospital. They are the same uh, uh, group, guys. So I, this is the AdWords account for them, a live AdWords account. You can see these are all campaigns which have been created. You know, this is, uh, the, we have categorized on the basis of the location-wise. We can categorize in whichever fashion we want to. You can see it's campaigns right up over here, and underneath campaigns, what all ad groups I told you, so if I click on the ad groups part, it tells me this ad group, one of the ad group name by the name of weight loss surgery is part of which campaign name. This is the campaign. You can see there are different campaigns over here. So every ad group has a parent campaign, right? And every ad, if I click onto the ad part, every ad has a specific ad group and a specific campaign. So I did tell you it's a tree altogether where campaign is the major bigger thing, account rather is a major bigger thing. So, you know, the overall account is this, which has a, a client ID this, you know, the customer ID is this. And underneath the account, you have campaigns, the, the second major categorization, then the ad groups being the third major categorization, and fourth being the ads, right? You can see every ad, uh, is being represented that these are the campaign, this is the campaign for which this ad is running, and underneath the campaign, this is the ad group, right? And I'll tell you about impressions and all that stuff in second, uh, in, in this uh, session uh, next Sunday, so that it all gets clear. It does tell me how much money have I, have we spent, what is the average cost per click, and so forth and so on. Uh, also, we'll talk about the keywords part in next session, guys. How do we set up keywords and how do we link keywords to a specific ad, right? It does tell me this keyword, let's say, fat reduction keyword is part of, is linked to this particular campaign and this particular ad group, right? And the bidding, so we always do a bidding, guys. We always tell Google that we are ready to pay this much amount uh, for per click, right? We when we run it, then we get to see the overall impressions coming up and uh, clicks coming up. Now, what exactly an impression is, uh, before we wrap up today's session, I want to tell you about uh, what exactly an impression is. Let's say when I click, uh, when I type in, I'm a customer, I'm a Google search engine user. When somebody types in, uh, I'm a Google search engine user and I type in the keyword by Titan Women Watches, somehow, Amazon uh, ad appears and also the Paytm ads appears and also the eBay ads, right? So somebody is also uh, publicizing the eBay stuff, right? The eBay ads also appear. What happens, when I click on the eBay ad, the eBay ad gets one click, but the Paytm ad and the Amazon ad which has got appeared in front of me, they have not got a click, they've got one impression. This ad has got one impression, this has got one impression, this has got one impression, and one click also. So EB has got one impression and one click both. Paytm has got zero click and one impression because at least I have seen it. The impression has come in, right? When the ad gets appeared in front of the eyes of the uh, of a particular search engine user, an impression gets counted, right? So. Uh, Android attendee says can't hear, not really sure, maybe you have just joined in, that's why you're not able to hear me. All right, so. Uh, 
So that's what impression is. Whenever an ad appears, but it does, uh, it is an impression. Always, it's a fact that the impressions are always going to be uh, impressions are always going to be more than the clicks because no matter how many times Amazon ad will appear, but not every time somebody will click on it. There can be ten times, ten people clicking on this keyword, typing in this keyword, ten times Amazon ad coming up. But out of 10 times only, probably might be three people would be clicking on the ad. So it would mean 10 impressions and two clicks, right? And when there is two clicks, right? If there are two clicks on out of total 10 impressions, guys, then we can actually uh, calculate one major thing, which is called CTR. And CTR stands for click through rate. Click through rate is number of clicks upon divided number of clicks divided by number of impressions into 100 that's what is click through rate is guys number of clicks upon number of impressions into 100 is called CTR let me show you CTR has been calculated over here also so if I go into the ads part you can see the impressions is all calculated here okay there is I need to actually take the labels and then show you okay let me show you the other way Just a sec. I'll, this is not the right example. So you can see the interaction, which is the clicks, right? Okay, over here you can see that. So clicks is 19,756, okay? And the number of impressions for this campaign is uh, 2 lakhs, no, sorry, it's 26 lakhs, 24,000. 26 lakhs time the overall advertisement for this campaign have got. Uh, uh, you know, this campaign has got these many impressions for overall, all the, you know, till the time since it, since beginning, it says all times. I can actually change it from all time to I can see the statistics only for last month or for last 30 days or for last seven days or only for yesterday and so forth and so on. Since the beginning, these many impressions have been received for this campaign and these many clicks. So number of clicks, which is 19,756 divided by 26 lakh. 24,967 clicks divided by impression into 100 gets me 0.75 CTR. If I click over here, it says interaction rate, which is called also called uh, it's also called a click through rate. It says this column indicates effectiveness of your ad. Interaction rate is the number of interactions, which is number of clicks divided by number of times your ad is shown. So it's number of times your ad is clicked divided by number of ads you're shown that's what in click through rate is guys I hope everybody is clear on that the CTR part before I move further I would request for a small feedback guys it's 10 15 and I want to take the feedback if you guys can help me uh, in filling up any idea any suggestions you have I'll just give you that just to say Sure, here's the feedback link, guys. So, guys, please do help me with the feedback. I have uh, shared across. So, Rajiv, Sam, Harshika, uh, Venkat, Vinay. Thank you so much, Vinay. And Vinay, you can uh, WhatsApp me tomorrow in case you have my number. I'll get you registered and get your entire stuff done. So this is my number. And Venkit, you can also get in touch with me. I've shared my number. And uh, same goes for you, Sam. So Sam, Venkit, all right, guys. 
So sorry for the trouble which happened in the initial uh, few minutes of the session. So thank you so much, Harshika. Thank you so much, uh, Rajiv. So next session, we'll start with doing overall practical stuff. And uh, Harshika, I have taken your, uh, what do you say, uh, request in terms of the SEO for eBay. So I'm trying to, I'll try my level best to prepare some content and would definitely try if I can, uh, you know, represent the same maybe on the uh, session which we'll have this Saturday. So this Saturday, the session we'll have, we'll do it for eBay SEO only. So don't need, uh, I, I've taken your stuff. Sorry about this week. I couldn't actually do it because of some emergency at my home. This week it will be, it will get done. All right, guys, thank you so much for uh, being part of the session today. I'll try my level best to, uh, uh, you know, take your feedback in a positive fashion and uh, apply all your suggestions into my sessions. And uh, the recording of the today's session would be available on the same Digital Marketing Partshala YouTube channel, which is bit.ly forward slash DMP videos. Right, so guys, this is the URL in case you want to see the overall recordings of the previous sessions also. So you can just subscribe yourself to this channel and you'll keep, uh, and you can keep checking out various videos by going on to this place. All right, thank you everybody for being part of today's session. We'll keep uh, getting uh, connected. We just stay tuned for more uh, sessions we'll have uh, on my WhatsApp, right? So uh, stay tuned on WhatsApp. We'll we'll, uh, we'll stay in touch. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. I'm ending the session. Bye bye.